friends, Courtney here. I don't have a lot of time today and I imagine you can relate, but a few weeks ago I purchased these awesome stamps, Simon Hurley Create Fall Sampler. I usually don't make Halloween cards and I also am not a super huge fan of things that are quote unquote cute, <laughs> um, super cute like this, but I couldn't get over this wonderful folk art design of the pumpkins and the little ghost. My daughter happens to also love bats. So I really couldn't resist this stamp set when I saw it um, released for this fall. Anyhow, I saw this and fell in love and purchased this stamp set and also the um, fall sampler coordinating dies. I don't think I'm gonna be showing this in this particular video because like I said, I'm a little short on time, but I thought it'd be fun to show off um, what you could do with this stamp set, um, creating a very simple card design using a pre-folded card base and just doing some inking and stamping of these stamps here. And then down the road, I may get a little bit more creative, especially with the pumpkins um, and creating some more dimensional cards. But I'm gonna put these aside for now and let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I've got my stamp positioner. This is the Misty Stamping Tool, but any stamp positioner will work. And I am gonna go ahead and put this card right in here. And I'm gonna start first with a sentiment. I'm gonna stamp that probably somewhere in the middle and then I am going to stamp all these designs in black ink all the way around the card to make something very uh, simple yet graphic. Um, and we'll just see how it turns out. So this is a little bit of an experiment, um, but you know, I really wanted to see what I could do in about five, 10 minutes. Um, I'm gonna show you something today. I'm gonna use this Black Ranger Archival ink. This is just something I had in my stash. I have a few black inks. This happened to be the one that I grabbed this morning. So I'm gonna set that aside. Let's open this package up. I don't know about you, but I don't always have a, I don't always have um, a specific idea. Well, I have a sense of an idea when I create, go to create a card, but I don't always have it fully fleshed out. I am thinking about maybe coming up with a process um, just to push my creativity. But for now, you're sort of seeing exactly my process for creating cards. Um, and I really just wanted to see, because these have a bit of an illustrated look, I really just wanted to go simple and um, go with black and white and just see what all this design would look like sort of um, arranged on this card around sentiment. So I think today I'm gonna go with the grateful. I think we'll go with the grateful sentiment. Okay, so what I like to do is just sort of line that up and I'm gonna slightly off center it, but I have to be careful because I also know that I want to stamp my design all the way around that sentiment, so I got to leave a little space. Um, and these are just coming out of the package, so they're going to be uber sticky. So the first go around, you always have to be a little careful. Um, I might do so grateful. We'll get a little wild today. This probably would be better for if I had a sticky mat, which I don't have but down the line, I think I shared a reel on my Instagram the other day where I was showing off the small space that I have to work with for making, um, for crafting. I'm actually sitting in my dining room right now, which is also my home office, which is also my crafting studio, which is studio, which is also the place where we share our meals as a family. So I'm always very cognizant about what I buy and what I, um, for crafting materials because everything fits in a closet or a couple of cupboards in two craft carts. Um, so if you have a small space like I do, you can probably relate. So I'm very choosy about the things that I purchase. So just as I imagine, this is super sticky, so it's gonna lift off the paper. Um, so I think what's gonna be important here for me, uh, I'm just gonna make sure that you can see this okay. Yeah, I think what's gonna be important 
important here for me today is to make sure that I'm very careful about my inking so I don't get, you know, all the way done and <laughs> or half the way through with my my stamping and have um, accidentally double stamped something. So we'll see how this goes. What I love about black ink is that, um, you know, especially this sort of permanent waterproof archival ink is that it just, it inks up so easily the first go around. That is going to be so cute. I'm a, kind of a sucker for the simple less is more type cards, um, especially with black and white. Hey. Okay. So that did well. I probably could have moved that so a little closer down, but you know what? I am just going to go with it. <laughs> this is, like I said, this is a trial. You can learn from my mistakes and your cards can be even more beautiful. If you hear the pitter patter of little feet, that's just my dog, Kate. She's a white Westie. She's about three years old. That's looking good. I'm going to do it one more time. Just doing, I, I prefer to dab a little ink at a time and stamp over more than once. Um, that way I'm not uh, pushing down really hard. There we go. Because I find that if I push down really hard, that's when I tend to make some mistakes. Now I'm going to get a baby wipe um, just to kind of clean as I go. I also have a microfiber cloth that I use. Um, but this was closest to me. So I'm going to use that for now and I'm going to put my stamp back. I have so many ideas for this stamp set and I'm a little, I'm, fe I'm feeling the pressure to use the stamp set before it's, you know, full on Thanksgiving when I start thinking about holiday cards. Um, so that's why I, even though I don't have a ton of time this week, um, I thought, you know what, I really just need to take an hour and a half and create some magic. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do, because I really need to be mindful about how I use the space, is I am going to kind of play around, you know, like so this is, there's more space here, so I'm gonna position some of the vertical pumpkins and I'm just gonna sort of start playing around with various ideas um, of how I can use these to take up space. And admittedly, I don't know how this is gonna turn out. I just sort of had this idea um, for just like stamping this all over this card in black and white. And I think I may end up using some masking afterward to fill in some spots with, with this with this little guy here, this little design here. Um, but let's do, and we will use the ghost. I don't know if I'll use the bat, TBD. We'll see how this inks. So we're, let's start with some of these big ones here. And then we'll do some masking and bring in some of this lovely, let's see, what else could I do? We've got, we have one more pumpkin here. Um, we could do all pumpkins, maybe. I, I don't know. I'm going to keep it like this. I'm going to keep it like this. And we're going to go with what we have. Let's I'm gonna set these aside. We're just going to go with what we have. And you know, these stamps, they, I can imagine how beautiful this would look with heat embossing. I pulled this out. I probably won't get to it today, but here's my embossing powder, some gold embossing powder. Imagine what these would look like embossed with gold and then cut with the coordinating dies. Um, one thing I would like to do is layer these pumpkins with some mirrored uh, orange cardstock that I have. So, We'll TBD. Let's we'll see what else we'll do with the stamp set. This might be a, a two card series, a two card video series. Okay. All right. So the important thing here is I'm really hoping that the paper doesn't shift because that will totally that might foil my plans. And because this is sort of the the design is a little bit um, 
intricate. I'm also probably going to just need to stamp this a few times and not push down too hard. You know, I when I was thinking about the quick card that I was going to make today, I also considered using my watercolor paper and doing like a fun wash background and then stamping with white. Um, but, you know, I had to make a, a choice. Like, you know, if you got a short, a limited amount of time and you just want to do one design, what are you going to go with? I feel like sometimes with crafting, card making especially, it's really all about decisions. And uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if you experienced the paralysis that I experienced when I, there's so many techniques out there. There are so many fun designs, so many techniques. How do you choose? You can't do everything, right? This is looking so beautiful. All right, let's just stick this aside. All right, here it goes. All right, we're gonna gently apply your pressure. Yeah, I am loving this. I am already loving this. You know, uh, it just occurred to me, like imagine, okay, stamp designers out there, I have an idea for you. Imagine the same folk print, but with sheep <laughs> and farm animals. I don't know why that just came to me, but I'm f seeing a card that's, you know, all a bunch of sheep and maybe have one that's like pink or something. I just love it. And okay, hopefully my pink, I'm really hoping that my paper didn't shift too much because we're going to stamp it again. But are you seeing what I'm seeing? That beautiful graphic black quality. Um, I hope that's coming across. This vision I have is coming across to you. This is such a fun stamp set. It's the flowers. If I mean, I think even if you've watched one of my videos, you probably, <laughs> you probably have already gathered um, how much I love flowers. Just look at this. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. So what's interesting I notice is there's this one spot on this ghost that does not like to receive the ink. Take the ink. But it's black, so you could always just go over it with a pen or marker, I suppose. It's everything is fixable. Except for if I double stamp this, then then I'm gonna have to start over and it's gonna be a sad day. It's going to be a sad day. Let's hope I didn't mess it up. I'm kind of worried. I'm worried. I'm going to take a sip of coffee before I open this because I just, I just need to have a little bit more caffeine before I handle the disappointment if I've messed it up already. All right, let's see. Ah, did I mess it up? Not really. It does seem like it's shifting a little. Hmm. Let's try it one more time. I think it did a little bit, but maybe I need to use a different ink. Ink, ink, ink. Ghosty is looking good. Yeah, that's kind of the thing. Maybe we'll try some other. Could be that my ink pad is old. I'll try it again. Let's see. You tell me in the comments, how could I be making this process better? How could I be ensuring that my paper doesn't lift? How could I be ensuring that I'm getting a better ink the first go around? I'm sure you're watching right now saying, oh, you should have done this. You should have done this. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's not at all what I was hoping for. Okay, well, this is why we make multiple card bases. Let's do it again. I'm gonna try a different ink. It could be this ink pad. I'm not sure where I got it from. So we're gonna start over. Good thing I had that sip of coffee. So here, I'm gonna grab another card base. Okay, uh, the, the other thing that may, that may help this I'm using this Hero Arts Intense Black Ink because I find that it just does such a great job. Um, 
So I'm thinking that maybe that was a very old ink pad, to be honest. I, I'm not sure if I got it from a friend or if I bought that one or, you know, who knows like how long things sit on the shelves at stores. So we're gonna, we're gonna do it again. Part of the problem too was that those inks, those stamps were brand new. So they're super sticky, which makes it a little harder for it to release them from the paper. So this I think is gonna work better. And something I like to do too is like just put my hand in there as I'm lifting them off. So I'm lifting off the stamps from the paper to try to keep that paper in place. So we're gonna keep inking, keep inking. We may, maybe we'll just accept that they're not perfect, but I'm kind of a perfectionist to be honest. All right, so we'll do this. This is just an aside, but one time I was talking to a therapist many years ago, we were talking about perfectionism and I'm like, I'm not a perfectionist. I'm not great at anything. <laughs> and she just laughed at me. I guess that was case in point. That's how you know if you're a perfectionist is when you are always striving for, to make something perfect, even though maybe you don't feel like anything is ever perfect. It's not about being perfect. It's about this like constant striving for perfection. Okay, so I think there was something on my, that stamp in particular. So let's ink that puppy right back up. Okay, got a little dirt. Okay, so this is working a little better. That's cool. Just looking at that design, it's so cool. Right, here we go, here we go, here we go. All right. Okay, this is, I'm getting the results that I want. And we're not, we're gonna let it be what it is. All right, so what's gonna be hard, I think, is gonna be masking these, but hey, I've got those dies, coordinating dies, so what I can do is just, uh, perhaps I can cut out the shapes to go over the pumpkins, tape it down, do some more inking, do some more stamping, I mean, and uh, okay, how we doing? All right, so I think I'm gonna go over it one more time because I really want that black ink. I want it to be so bold. And so here, here's the thing. This, the mistake that I made previously was because I think it was because my stamps were brand new and they weren't primed. They were so sticky. And you know, I've heard other crafters talk about that, but I've never, <laughs> this is awful admission, never really paid attention to what they do to make, to, to get their new stamps ready for their first um, debut. Maybe you, I don't know, I feel like they just need to be less sticky. So like maybe you um, take your stamp and stamp it onto a plain sheet of paper, paper or something like that. All right, let's see. Okay, I'm good with this. This is looking great. Um, it's looking very black and graphic. Well, let's see, let's do it down like this. And the word so. All right, I'm gonna want this nice and low because like last time it felt, you know what? I'm just so worried that it's gonna, see that's sticky. Let's put it here so that it's nice and low, but so grateful. All right, so grateful. All right, let's do this. We're gonna ink it up. A few pounces.
I mean, you, this would be amazing in, if you were to do this all with black embossing powder. Be so beautiful. I might go over it with a shimmer pen, because why not? Why not bring out the shimmer? Hey. Okay, so now that I've got my card <clears throat> all stamped up, I'm going to use a shimmer marker and make it nice and sparkly. All right, so this is, I believe this is Wink of Stella. Now, my friend Stephanie, um, she's also on YouTube in a nutshell crafts, and she's the one that gave this to me. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to just bring in some glitter. I'm half considering using glossy accents, but you know what? I think I think I need to just let it be simple because this is what I saw in my mind. I'm a yeah, so we're just gonna keep it simple. It's so cute. Yeah. Another thing that might be good here is some, um, is if you have a, uh, you could also use a shimmer spray. I thought about maybe putting that on here. This, I'm not sure how am I gonna get this like working better here. Let's put all that shimmer on there. So I don't know if you can see how that's changing it. You might not be able to see it a little bit, but just giving it a little bit of shimmer. A little goes a long way. You might be able to use a black jelly roll pen. You have to be careful because you'll see that some of the, the Wink of Stella, it does bring in the, um, it, it is pick, picking up some of that black ink um, a little bit and getting it into the white spots. So I don't think I'm gonna do any more of this and I'm gonna clean that tip off there. Let's see, I think, I don't know if I'm supposed to squeeze that or how that, oh yeah, that is how that works. Let's try it again, let's see. I think you're supposed to, oh shoot. That came out so fast. That came out so fast. <laughs> it's all right. So we'll have one accent ghost. And try to keep the white intact. We'll let that dry. Um, I may, may dab it just a little because now that's kind of gold. It's kind of gold. You know, maybe we will put, maybe we will use some glossy accents. Why not? Here's my glossy accents. I just decided. <clears throat> Since we're gonna, since that one's no longer as deep black, let's see, let's get this in here. This is how I, this is all you have to do if your glossy accents gets plugged up. All right, and so I figure it's gonna take a bit and we'll see how this works. So uh, kind of like frosting a cookie, I'm gonna go around the edges. Let's give this a little bit more. Okay. Oop. Go around the edge here. Woo! We create our border. So I guess we're gonna go with dimension, even though I was like, oh, it's just gonna be simple. It's okay to change your mind. I 
Once I got dumped all that wink of Stella on there, it's kind of like, well, there's no going back. All right. <clears throat> So it's a, this is a one layer card with mostly it's, I mean, this is so simple. So this is why, you know, less is more. You don't have to have a million supplies to make cards. You don't have to have a craft room. You don't have to have a lot of time. I'm going to, it's, this is the equivalent of a lunch break. I'm going to go back across the room and sit at my computer and edit about 500 family photo sessions. And I feel, but I feel like I had some me time just in this short bit of time making this card for you all. And once that dries, I'll show you some beautiful pictures of how it came out. I'm really excited about this. I hope you loved it. Until next time, I hope you keep your crafty goodness cup full. Bye-bye.